Good evening, everyone. My name is Monica Taylor, and I'm the Vice President of Development and Alumni Relations, and I'm pleased to welcome our, all of our alumni back to campus and to welcome all of you here today to this very special ceremony. First, I would like to thank our talented pianist, Michael Aronson. Michael is a retired faculty member after a long career with the Department of Music here at the university, and we greatly appreciate his willingness to join us for this event tonight. Thank you very much, Michael. We are gathered here today to recognize a most distinguished group of UD alumni and their achievements. It is most fitting that this celebration is taking place as part of Homecoming Weekend. Each year, the campus is particularly festive as our alumni return to revisit treasured hallmarks, to remember their undergraduate and graduate years, and to reconnect with UD faculty, staff, and friends. It's now my pleasure to introduce Patrick Harker, President of the University of Delaware. Well, thank you, Monica, and good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. Let me also welcome you to Homecoming Weekend and to our recognition ceremony for presidential citation recipients. This uh, event is our way to honor our alumni for their professional success in public service and to thank you to thank you for representing your alma mater, the University of Delaware, so well. In a community of more than 165,000 living blue hens, we have our fair share of exceptional alumni, graduates who embody the UD ideals of excellence, of talent, of discipline, passion, and vision. Tonight's honorees join a much smaller, more distinguished group of 233 members. The smallness is by design. We have thousands of success stories, but the most memorable are the ones that bring us together and bind us together. Today, we recognize leaders in social networking and entertainment IT, agriculture and farming, education, engineering and environmental research, finance, politics, higher education, law, nursing and health sciences. That's a big footprint in a lot of different disciplines. And it shows the extraordinary reach and influence of our alums. Our honorees are clearly accomplished. They are success stories we hold out to today's students. They are the embodiment of the attributes we value. Talent, drive, perseverance, and hard work. Maybe students wouldn't believe us if they didn't see it for themselves. But they do see it. The alums we honor tonight are a presence on this campus. They speak to students about their areas of expertise and share advice on getting into and moving up through their industries. There are presence at job fairs and information sessions, easing the college to life transition that can be so daunting to students, especially today. They hire students, they mentor students. They endow scholarships and support the university's academic and capital priorities. They serve on our alumni boards and on our college advisory councils. The cumulative effect of all these activities is incredible. I mean, the effect is incredible, influencing how and who we educate, how we build on strengths to advance our mission, how we grow and adapt without sacrificing the core principles that constitute our institutional identity. Today's honorees serve as material examples of the remarkable success UD's graduates can achieve. They are role models of how to use that achievement for the greater good. I wanna thank you all for being leaders. But more to the point, I wanna thank you for being leaders who give back. I wanna thank you for caring about this university, our university, and its students. I wanna thank you for your generosity of time and talent, of intellect and energy. And I wanna thank you for helping us build a better UD not just by the distinction of your achievements, but by the power of your service and the wisdom of your counsel. I thank you for constantly renewing your relationship with your university, for showing us the strength and community, for living our mission every day in your commitment to excellence, and for helping us graduate young men and women whom we hope to recognize with an honor like this in a few years from now. Because while this community is small, our ultimate goal is to swell its ranks with graduates whose accomplishments in professional and public service 
will one day match your own. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Harker. Today's ceremony marks the 22nd anniversary of the Presidential Citation for Outstanding Achievement. The University of Delaware established this award to recognize University of Delaware graduates from the last 20 years who have already demonstrated great promise and achievement in their professional lives and public service activities. This year, we add 10 names to this list of distinguished UD graduates. Your program today features brief biographical information about each of this year's recipients, as well as reflections from them on their experiences at Delaware. I hope you'll have the chance to read about them and their impressions of the university, our faculty, staff, and the learning and teaching environment here. Now, the faculty, friends, family members, and mentors of this year's Presidential Citation recipients will introduce our honorees. We, we begin with Professor Burnaby Munson, who will introduce our first recipient, Scott Barber. Dr. Munson. Scott Barber is a New Jerseyite who earned his bachelor's degree in chemistry and a certificate to teach high school chemistry in 1996. Scott was an active member of the UDL, uh, University of Delaware marching band and remains a strong supporter of the band to this day. He entered the university with a major in chemical engineering and then switched to chemistry, for which I'm grateful. Scott and his now wife, Krista, took honors general chemistry and honors quantitative analysis with me both semesters while they were freshmen. That is a lot of Munson each week. In spite of these courses, however, Scott and Krista invited me to their wedding several years later. We're friends on Facebook, and their most recent picture is a very lush scene, a lush beach scene, where the family's on vacation. The beach is not New Jersey, and it's not an artificial beach in Austin where they're currently staying. Scott taught chemistry and physics for a couple of years after graduation, and then began his career in educational technology as the director of technology for the Cranberry Township School District. He's continued in this area since then, first with Apple, and there rising through the ranks with increasing responsibility for demonstrating the uses of technology for science teachers, not just science teachers, but for teachers in high school and in college. He's currently the head of the quality for the community operations at Facebook in Austin, Texas, of course. In this role, he leads a team which has responsibility to scale in the effectiveness of the company's account support and abusive content review process for the 1.3 billion people who use Facebook. Scott has changed emphasis during his career from a first-line teacher originally, directly helping students learn, then to a teacher of teachers, helping teachers learn to use technology to improve their teaching and to improve their students' learning, to a manager of teams supporting users of technology, but in all cases, he was helping others to help themselves. He's been successful in adapting technology to the needs of others, rather than forcing others to adapt to the changes in technology. I regret that Scott is not here, but let's hear from him anyway, using technology, of course. Good evening, President Harker, Dr. Munson, fellow recipients, and honored guests. I apologize that I could not be with you in person to receive this honor and to once again return to the university that has given so much to me and my family. In 1992, I arrived at UD as part of the honors program. I found experts in their fields willing to take undergraduates under their wing and teach them, not just in the classroom, but in study breaks and well beyond. I was encouraged to actively communicate with my professors through office hours and via email. I used technology as an essential tool for problem solving and even had a high-speed internet connection in my Ray Street dorm room. I was able to study vocal performance as a non-major, sing with the chorale, and took the field with the marching band. I was encouraged to develop my writing and speaking skills and so I wrote and spoke, initially grudgingly, but eventually with ease. 
This balance between teaching and research, between technology and the liberal arts, colored by the relationships with my professors and fellow students, has influenced my career in so many ways. It was also the place where I met my wife, Krista, a biochemistry major on the first day of classes in Dr. Munson's Chem 119 lecture. Seven years later, we married, and we're celebrating our 15th wedding anniversary this year. We have three wonderful children, Craig, Aaron, and Owen, who keep us on our toes every single day. It is her support and love for me and our children that has enabled me to blaze a trail that has often taken me away from them for weeks at a time. From four years in the classroom in New Jersey, to 12 years at Apple helping public schools and colleges with technology initiatives, to now working at Facebook to ensure it continues to grow as a safe place for people to share the moments in their life with their friends and family. UD has been there with me every step of the way. I wish to specifically thank Drs. Munson and Scantleberry, who nominated me for this honor, to Professor Heidi Sarver, whose work within the music department I continue to support and admire, and John Kane, whose work with me and my family as we found ourselves in a position to give back to the university, and Presidents Roselle and Harker as they propelled forward this university while it remains a place that I hope my own children will choose someday. I am humbled by this honor and look forward to the opportunity to once again return to this school and community. Thank you and good evening. Good evening, I'm James Atkins, an irrigation engineer at the Georgetown Carville Research and Education Center. Tonight, I'm, ple I'm pleased to introduce Mr. Jay Baxter. He earned his bachelor's degree in agriculture in 2002 and is a fourth generation farmer at Baxter Farms Incorporated in Georgetown, Delaware. Jay currently manages the farm's 2,800 uh, acres in cooperation with his family. His progressive approach to adopting new technology his love of agriculture and his amazing work ethic has allowed him to move the Baxter family farm into one of the most efficient operations in Sussex County. Over the last few years, Jay has worked closely with researchers and extension staff in the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources on valuable projects related to irrigation, varieties, weed control, and nutrient management. Jay and his family have also donated field research equipment in support of the operations at the Thurman Adams Jr. Agricultural Research Farm. In 2006, Jay and his family created the James H. Baxter, Baxter III Scholarship Endowment to support undergraduate students in the College of Agriculture and Natural Resources. He has become a leader in the field of agricultural production and a voice to educate the public about the significance of agriculture the significance agriculture plays in feeding our world. Jay's background and experience coupled with his congenially, congenial personality allows him to serve as an outstanding ambassador for Delaware agriculture and the University of Delaware. My experiences with Jay began with him as a student, later as an employee, and then as a colleague, and most of all, as a respected friend. It's with great pleasure and pride that I'd like to congratulate you on receiving the 2014 Presidential Citation for Outstanding Achievement. This is really something tonight. I, thank you all. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to be here tonight. And it is quite interesting being the first one in person to speak with all of you. <laughs> You're welcome. So to graduate from high school in 1999 was a big feat for me. And being the third generation of Baxters to attend the University of Delaware was almost a requirement but I knew from a very early age that I wanted to be involved in agriculture and farming. And I had no idea that my education would bring me to the places in which I am now. It's amazing to watch just some kid that came from Georgetown, Delaware, up here with uh, not a whole lot of expectations, to leave here and go back home and be able to grow a family business into a, a very well-oiled machine and to increase efficiencies on a regular basis. I have the honor of working with my grandparents on a regular basis. 
My grandfather is 90 years old and still has the heart and the drive to operate equipment on a regular basis. Some days it's what we would refer to maybe as stubborn, but we wouldn't have it any other way. It's going to be an honor to be able to carry the farming operation on to the next generation. I have two sons, James and Jude, that are here tonight, and I'd also like to specifically honor somebody very important. My, my grandfather's always mentioned that behind every great farmer, there is a great farmer's wife. And so that rings very true with the love of my wife, my, love of my life, who, who doesn't get to see me on a very, very regular basis. And uh, it's, it's a, a really, truly an honor to come here tonight among PhDs, doctorates, the dean, the president. It's, it's, I'm truly humbled. So thank you all very much. Good evening, everyone. I've had the pleasure of knowing Dr. Emanuel Koch Esquire, affectionately known to many of us as Manny, since his very first semester as an undergraduate here in the early 1990s. He earned a bachelor's degree in education with dual certification in elementary education and special education in 1996. Upon graduation, his very first job was teaching social studies to students with special needs in the Newcastle County Detention Center. His leadership skills were honed through the completion of a Doctor of Jurisprudence from Widener University School of Law in, 19, in 2001, a Master of Education with a concentration in Educational Leadership from UD in 2002, and a Doctorate of Education in Educational Leadership through National Lewis University School of Education just this year. Throughout his career, Manny has held many leadership positions, including principal at Newark High School, right here in Newark, assistant superintendent in the East Baton Rouge Parish in Louisiana, assistant superintendent in the Philadelphia School District, and he is currently in his third year as superintendent of the Portland Public Schools in Maine. While working as a leadership coach with the Chicago Public Schools, Manny was the point person to principals in the High School Transformation Project, which was supported with $50 million from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Throughout his career, he has continued to contribute and to realize his initial goal as an undergraduate student at UD, to make a difference in the life of at-risk students and to become an advocate within their communities. Manny has always been passionate about teaching every learner. One of my fondest memories of Manny as an undergraduate was when he began wearing a blue blazer to all of his professional education courses in his junior year. At that point in his academic career, he was writing and teaching his own lesson plans in the public schools, and he was certainly showing up for class better dressed than almost any other student on campus at the time. When we questioned him about why he was wearing that blazer to class, he replied that when he began taking his professional courses, it was important to him that he dress the part. To this day, Manny is one of the most inspiring educational leaders I know, and I bet you he still has that blue blazer somewhere in his closet. <laughs> he is truly an exceptional young man and an excellent role model for future UD alumni. Manny, it's my sincere pleasure to present you with the Presidential Citation for Outstanding Achievement. Good evening. I'd like to thank Gail for those kind remarks. Certainly like to thank University of Delaware, President Harker, and the Alumni Association uh, for this 
uh, Recognition Award. And I'm deeply humbled uh, to share the stage with some outstanding recipients. To um, my family, I'd like to acknowledge my mother and my uncle who are uh, deceased, but played an amazing uh, part in shaping my life in terms of my core beliefs and values, and instilling in me a sense and purpose to help those who are disenfranchised. I'd like to thank those who are in attendance, my support system, uh, my fiance, who's a fellow uh, UD graduate, uh, through the Aspire program and her parents who are here uh, this evening to support me. More importantly, the amazing professors at University of Delaware in the College of Education. Uh, Professor Hample was here. Um, I'd like to thank you for just inspiring me and, and, and pushing all of the students in class uh, with amazing lectures and getting us to reach beyond ourselves. I'd like to thank Barbara Van Dornick, who's also here as well, and Mr. Shaw, who was the point person for the Aspire program, which is designed to recruit talented students of color into the field of education. When you think about the global challenges that we face, whether it's ending our dependence on fossil fuel, whether it's climate change, global warming, whether it's the growing income inequality gap, or uh, the lack of uh, of food sustenance for many of the, of the planet's inhabitants in fighting world hunger. I submit to you that there's no greater challenge that we face than ensuring that every student graduates prepared for college and career and life. And I'm proud to be among the thousands of educators from the College of Education at the University of Delaware whose life's work is about answering that challenge. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Michael Vaughn, Associate Dean of the College of Engineering, and it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Cedric Johnson. Since graduating from the University of Delaware in 1995 with a degree in civil engineering, Cedric Johnson has coordinated, planned, designed, and managed airport facilities engineering projects for some of the nation's busiest airports, especially along the East Coast. Specifically, he was part of the management team of the first post 9-11 airport terminal in the country at BWI Theogood Marshall Airport. In addition to overseeing the facility's engineering projects. He advises airports on best practices for improving operations and tenant and passenger satisfaction while ensuring regulatory compliance. In all, he has served as the engineer of record for over $1 billion worth of airport improvement projects. Cedric is the founder and president of Airport Design Consultants Incorporated, ADCI which in just eight years has grown to over 40 employees. Under his leadership, ADCI received two 2012 Maryland Quality Initiative Awards of Excellence, one for a subcontractor engineer and another for minority enterprise engineering. Cedric has returned to campus as a speaker for the Civil Engineering Department's Practitioner in Residence Day, and he actively recruits and hires UD students for ADCI. In 2012, he established the Raymond Thomas Johnson Scholarship in memory of his father, which supports engineering students who participate in the Resources to Ensure Successful Engineers Program, the RISE program, a program that supports underrepresented ethnic students and others pursuing engineering, computer sciences, and information systems degrees. Cedric recently provided the keynote address at the annual RISE program banquet. You never know how you have an impact on someone's life by a small action or gesture. As a mentor, my deepest desire has been to make a real positive and lasting difference in the lives of the students that I've had the privilege to know. In a recent discussion with Cedric, I asked him to share one of his most vivid memories of his time during, uh, as a student at UD. Cedric responded, and I quote, I always remember the challenge that the engineering curriculum presented and the support that was offered by you, the RISE program, my faculty, and UD generally. As you go through college, 
It is the people you interact with that help you through the process. You encouraged me to attend a career fair and obtain my internship as soon as possible. That is where I met a firm, URS. They had an internship with an airport department, and the rest is history, end quote. Richard Tapia, esteemed mathematician and first Hispanic recipient of the National Medal of Science and director of the Center for Excellence and Equity in Education at Rice University, stood on this very stage early this week and spoke of the critical importance of building community and developing strong mentoring and support program to promote student success. Our college's RISE program has been about that important work for 41 years, and Cedric Johnson is part of that proud tradition of academic community, support, and success. One of the core contemporary objectives of our College of Engineering, as promoted by the vision of our dean, Tundi Oganaki, is exposing our students to the concept of entrepreneurship, not just from a personal wealth perspective, but from the purest, most basic meaning of this term. What is an entrepreneur? By definition, a person who organizes and manages any enterprise, especially a business, usually with considerable initiative and risk. It is my personal opinion that Cedric Johnson embodies the essence of the entrepreneurial spirit, and in this sense, he is a wonderful role model for our students and anyone who endeavors to have a profound impact on this world. Cedric, Congratulations on this well-deserved presidential citation for outstanding achievement. Thank you so much for the introduction, Dean Vaughn. I don't know if I can outdo you here. <laughs> that was excellent. Thanks all of you for coming here. Uh, there's a saying that I have in my head, and that is that I've kept for 20 years, which success is talent plus desire plus support. With those three things, that's how we achieve success. I'm a personal believer that everyone in the world, everyone in this room has some level, some talent that they can maximize. Desire is the other piece of that. And I think the representatives up here on this stage show you what desire can do when you put your mind to it and try to achieve success. But without support, we can't achieve our goals. We can't achieve success. So my speech is really about a thank you to all of the people who supported me, starting with my father, who's not here right now, who I wish could see what he put his time into and what he tried to make. Number two is my mother, who is here now. She's the strongest person I know. And without her, I wouldn't be able to achieve the things that I did. My godparents are also here, who are mentors. They've been mentors for me in my life, and they show me what it takes to have a successful family and to be a successful person. The University of Delaware has been four of the best years of my life. I thank the University of Delaware for everything that it's given me and the success that I've achieved. Now, I would get in trouble if I didn't recognize my two daughters, Cameron and Lauren. And my daughter Lauren said, make sure that I say she's the awesomest. So I'll try to say that. <laughs> and last but not least is my wife. Because when you start a business and you have a two-year-old at home and then your wife comes home and tells you you're pregnant, it takes a person with courage and bravery to be able to say, you'll still come through. I know you will. So thank you, Nicole. Thank my wife. And thank all of you at the University of Delaware for everything you've done for me. Good evening, I'm uh, Charles Epifanio. I'm the uh, Harrington Professor of Marine Science in the School of Marine Science and Policy here at the University of Delaware. And I am absolutely delighted to introduce our next uh, recipient, that's Dr. M. Brandon Jones. Um, I know Brandon very well, and I served as his major academic advisor during his graduate education here at the University of Delaware. And as I told Brandon, on the day that he graduates, like it or not, I remain your advisor for life. So. 
Brandon's undergraduate education transpired at Lincoln University where he received a bachelor's degree in biology. And we're actually later tonight, he's going to some uh, homecoming event there. <laughs> Brandon then earned his master's and doctoral degrees in marine studies from the University of Delaware. And while a doctoral candidate at UD, Brandon studied the early life history of the Atlantic blue crab, a species that supports a $150 million industry along the Atlantic and Gulf Coast of the United States. Brandon's PhD work is frequently cited in the scientific literature and has, and has provided unique understanding of factors that control year-to-year -year variation in the catch of blue crabs. Brandon is currently the Assistant Center Director for Ecosystems Research at the United States Environmental Protection Agency in Washington. He also serves as the agency's representative on the prestigious White House Federal Committee on Science, Technology, Engineering, and, and Mathematics. These high-level positions allow Brandon to lead coordinated efforts that connect academic and private sectors for workforce development and innovative research and sustainable technologies. These jobs require extensive collaboration between EPA's program offices, regional offices, and other federal agencies. This is a difficult task in present day Washington for which Brandon is extraordinarily well suited. In addition to his EPA duties, Brandon is currently on part-time assignment at the National Science Foundation where he leads a program that places NSF fellows in other federal agencies. Overall, these positions allow Brandon to generate important impact at the national level. That's very important. Here at UD, Brandon continues to promote research and academic programs in the College of Earth, Ocean, and Environment, and he has been a featured speaker at the college's annual Honors Day ceremony. Brandon also serves as a member of the Dean's Advisory Council and is available to students in the college who are seeking alternative career paths. Brandon? Congratulations on winning a 2014 Presidential Citation for Outstanding Achievement. This may not be a PC, but I first have to thank my Heavenly Father for much orchestration in my life. I certainly want to thank uh, the best advisor in the world, Chuck Epifanio, uh, as he mentioned, coming from Lincoln University, um, and some of you may not know, it's a HBCU, actually the nation's first historically black college, just up 896. When you leave Lincoln and you go to Lewis, Delaware, for graduate school, you realize quickly that the world is not as you thought it was. And uh, you, you begin to question your career choices. Uh, but when you, when you have the support of uh, a wonderful advisor like Epi and all the staff and faculty at, at UD down at the Lewis campus and here on main campus, it was an easy choice just to stay and, and also return for my PhD. Uh, I do want to thank uh, President Harker um, and all those that were involved in, in the ceremony and, and the nomination. Um, I am humbled as well. Um, when I saw that well, we had Facebook representatives and entrepreneurs, I said, well, why did they choose me? Uh, but this is a, this is a wonderful, uh, wonderful um, event, and, and thank you so much. I do want to thank um, some specific people at the Lewis campus, of course, Dean uh, Nancy Target, who couldn't be here, uh, Peggy Conlin on the staff, and also uh, Jan Daisy, who uh, helped make my uh, experience at Delaware even greater. Um, and last but not least, I want to thank the uh, three beautiful women in my life, my uh, daughter Alana, uh, the, the woman who brought me in this world, uh, Ramona Henry, and the, the woman who's going to see me out, uh, my, <laughs> my, uh, my beautiful wife, Ellen. Love you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. My name is Joyce Henderson, and I serve as the Assistant Director for Employer Partnerships within the Career Services Center here at the university. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our next Presidential Citation Award recipient, Dr. Wesley T. Proctor. Dr. Proctor 
is a graduate of George Washington Carver High School of Engineering and Science in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He decided to attend the University of Delaware for his undergraduate education because of his interest in the engineering field and also because UD is known, the College of Engineering is highly known and highly ranked by the US News World Report and it seemed like a perfect match for him to be here. Prior to enrolling in the University of Delaware, he dealt with a tragic death of his younger brother. His younger brother James was murdered by a family acquaintance. A month after arriving to campus for his freshman year, Dr. Proctor's grandfather died. And two months later, his grandmother died. Despite these tragedies, he was determined to pursue his educational goals and was determined to leave UD with a diploma in his hand. Dr. Proctor struggled academically during his first two years of college. He did, however, find inspiration in two registered student organizations, the Gospel Choir and Warriors for Christ. And it was through Warriors for Christ and his leadership role in Warriors that I had the opportunity to get to know him and to learn about his life, his family, and academic challenges. I recall one day when he stopped by my office with a bewildered look on his face. He looked me straight in the eyes and he said he didn't know what to do because he was being dismissed from the engineering program due to his low grade point average. I was able to talk to him and I learned that he was passionate about public speaking and about writing. This led him to change his major from engineering to English with the concentration in technical writing. For those who know him, you would probably agree that Proctor had found the right major <laughs> that would line up with his passion of public speaking. He's not afraid to speak to anyone, regardless of their position. He won respect from his peers and formal senior administrators, such as Dr. Dave Roselle, Dr. Stuart Sharkey, Dr. Timothy Brooks, VP Judith Gibson, as well as he served as a student representative on the Board of Trustees. After graduating from the university, Dr. Proctor pursued his master's in education administration at Temple University, and he obtained a doctor of education degree with honors at the age of 26 from the University of Pennsylvania. Can you believe that? <laughs> What I admired about him after he left the University of Delaware was that he didn't forget about the students who may have experienced similar challenges in life. He returned to UD on numerous occasions to participate in the multi-ethnic career conference as a keynote speaker or panelist. He was also instrumental in sharing his faith with the students of Warriors for Christ, which was his lifeline here at the University of Delaware. Currently, Dr. Proctor serves as the executive administrator and youth pastor of Victory Christian Center in Philadelphia, which has a membership of over 2,000. To give back to the local community, Dr. Proctor has established a nonprofit organization called the Wesley Proctor Ministries, which assists college-bound students, high school students, with book scholarships. He's given over 100 scholarships to students in Philadelphia, as well as to students who have chosen to attend the University of Delaware. He's given these book scholarships by way of the Center for Black Culture. These scholarships are named the James William Proctor Award after his deceased brother and the Wesley Tyrone Proctor Award. This year, the city of Philadelphia has donated a building to Wesley Proctor Ministries to recognize the services and outstanding seven-year track record of helping economically disadvantaged students and families. Also, Philadelphia Councilwoman Jannie Blackwell from District 3 has committed to funding the organization to assist with offering even more student book scholarships. Stephen Covey said, you are not a product of your circumstance, but you are a product of the decisions you make. Dr. Proctor had a choice to give up academically or to persevere. His decision to rise above the storms of life is why we celebrate him today. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Wesley T. Proctor to the podium.
Wow. <laughs> wow. Um, I was sitting here um, thinking about what am I going to say? Um, and this vision of me sitting in the living room on Alden Street um, back in 1989, and it was cold, winter, and I remember opening those grades. And I looked at my mother, I said, Mom, I don't think I'm gonna make it. She said, listen, boy, <laughs> you are going back. I said, Mom, I don't wanna go back. Tears running down my face. I said, Mom, I've given all I could give. She said, you let the university tell you that, but you getting out of here. I went back, not knowing what to expect, and that was 25 years ago as of this year. Who would have ever thought that I would be standing on the stage receiving such a prestigious award from such a phenomenal institution? I am so humbled and grateful to God for this opportunity. President Harker, thank you so much. To the nomination committee, thank you. Monica Taylor, thank you so much. Joyce Henderson, Mom Joyce, thank you so much. Stuart Sharkey, I don't know where you are. Stuart, where you at? <laughs> thank you for pushing me. Thank you for believing in me. Um, Mom, I love you. VCC, Victory Christian Center, I love you. Papa, I love you. And I am just so thankful today for this honor. And I thank all of you for coming out to celebrate with us this evening. Thank you so much. Well, it's my pleasure to stand in for David's wife, Nicole, who um, suffered a, a sports injury this week. So we wish Nicole a, a speedy recovery, but I'm delighted to be here to speak on behalf of David uh, Margulit, who earned his bachelor degree from the university in 1997 and went on to earn his MBA from the Harvard Business School in 2001. He is the chief operating officer for the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. In this role, he is responsible for developing and implementing strategies and systems to scale the clean energy economy and provide a more resilient and efficient energy system in New York. Formerly a senior advisor in the office of New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, he led the city's effort to improve customer service and online services for businesses. As Deputy Commissioner for the New York City Department of Small Business Services, he led the development and delivery of a suite of services to help businesses start and expand, drove a turnaround of the city, city's job and training services, and instituted improvements to customer service across multiple city agencies. Throughout David's career, he has developed and managed strategy, systems, technology, and teams that have transformed service delivery for businesses and governments. David is motivated to eliminate bureaucracy and friction in our economy, and is passionate about business models that improve service delivery through technology. Just this week, David was appointed as adjunct faculty member at Columbia University's School of International and Public Affairs and will begin instruction in the spring. Congratulations, David, on receiving a 2014 Presidential Citation for Outstanding Achievement. Thank you. This is, this is quite a, a privilege and quite an honor to, to be here today with, with most of my family. I wish, I wish my wife could join us today, um, who was also, she was University of Delaware 1998. We actually, we met at the University of Delaware uh, sharing an office. I, I was interfraternity council president at the time and 
and she was Panhellenic Council president at the time, which is kind of, it's kind of corny and awesome at the same time. <laughs> but um, but I'm, I'm really proud to be here today with my, with my son, Leo, who it's hard to believe. He's, uh, he's fewer years away from being in college than, uh, than I am removed from, from college. And, and James, like, like several of us, he was, he was moved to tears by, by your remarks. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry about that, but, but, uh, but I couldn't imagine not having him here. Um, to my parents, uh, who much like the University of Delaware, uh, I've been the beneficiary of far more from than I could ever even come close to imagining. Uh, I would be able to give back. You are amazing parents, um, so generous and so loving and so caring in so many ways, and great grandparents too. Uh, my my mother-in-law, who worked at the University of Delaware for a very long time, Ann Raymond, um, and whom half the panel seems to know. <laughs> uh, 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 Oh, you're Dave Margulis. Ann Raymond is your mother-in-law. She had a, she had an impact in my life, and. Um, that is because Anne is one of one of the uh, is one of the people with the greatest generosity of of spirit and kindness that that you'll ever meet, and uh, and my sister-in-law uh, Anne Marie, who's uh, a wonderful nurse and helping my wife through her injury. Thank thank you very much, and, and a pretty darn good sister-in-law as well. It's so meaningful that that you were able to be here today. Thank you so much. The University of Delaware um, was and is an extraordinary, extraordinary institution. Um, and I'm grateful for this so many different ways. It's impacted my life, uh, both inside the classroom and outside the classroom while I was here, both as, as an alumni, uh, since I've been able to, uh, to move on and, and, and do some, some interesting things uh, that Delaware was foundational in, in enabling me to do. Um, the University of Delaware, I remember, one of the reasons I came here was because I thought it was a, a, not only did I think it had all the benefits of, of a large university uh, with all the intimacy and, and interesting things that programs like the Honors Program and, and, and many of the, the smaller uh, parts of the university were able to offer, but because I also thought it was a, a school on the rise in so many different facets. And that was true then, and President Harker, that's especially true today. It is, it is really a privilege to be associated with this institution. Um, I'm flattered that you think I've given back, and, and uh, you know, I hope, uh, I would be proud to be able to continue to do so. This is, this is a place that has uh, obviously had a profound impact in so many people's lives, and uh, is still at the precipice of, of um, becoming what it can and will be, and I'm very grateful to be part of this today. So thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ann Artis, Deputy Dean in the College of Arts and Sciences and faculty member in the English Department. And it's in that capacity that I'm delighted to be able to introduce Michael Seidel. Michael Seidel earned his PhD in English from the University of Delaware in 1995, after earning both his BA and MA in English from James Madison. I happen to have been serving as Director of Graduate Studies in English during part of the time that Michael was a PhD candidate. And what I remember best about him as a student are two things. One, the fierce intensity with which he pursued his doctoral studies. He was totally focused. Um, and the pasta sauce Raphael that he and his girlfriend, now wife Lisa, served to Judith Roof and me one night. Anybody out there remember Judith Roof? Um, my colleague Judith was a serious foodie before that term came into common use. And she was also a very serious um, hotshot feminist film critic who did not suffer fools gladly, gladly shall we say. So the fact that Michael passed muster with Judith as a cook, as well as an intellect, still stands out in my memory. <laughs> While finishing his dissertation, Michael enrolled in law school, graduating with honors from Georgetown University Law Center after serving as managing editor of the Journal of Law and Policy in International Business. Michael's currently a partner and attorney at Pachulski, Stang, Zeal, and Jones 
in Wilmington, Delaware, and is admitted to practice law in Delaware and the District of Columbia. He has represented debtors, creditors committees, creditors and asset purchasers in Chapter 11 reorganizations and liquidations and in related adversary proceedings. He's provided legal representation to a multitude of companies, including Amerisurve Food Distribution, American Eco Holding Corporation, eToys, Filene's Basement, Superior Telecom, The Great Train Store Company, Pathmark Stores, United Artists Theater Company, and Western's, Western Nonwovens. Prior to joining Pachulski Zhang Z I knew I wasn't going to get through it. Petulski, Stang, Zeal, and Jones, Michael served as an associate with Wolf Block, where he represented clients in bankruptcy and corporate matters. A loyal listener, Michael is a strong supporter of WVUD, the university's non-commercial educational radio station, and a regular patron of the theater of the Rep Company. Michael, congratulations on receiving a 2014 presidential citation for outstanding achievement and thank you for your passion for this institution. Thank you, Anne, for those kind words. I, uh, I remember the pasta, Raphael. I haven't made it in a while, but I'm uh, inspired to have it again now. Um, I'll give everyone a little peek behind the scenes here because everybody likes that, it awards things. I was told to keep my comments to approximately two minutes. Uh, I assume music will start if I go over that. Um, I, thought, I thought, you realize I'm an attorney with a PhD in, in English. I um, I can say hello in two minutes. I don't think I can say thank you in two minutes, but I will try. Um, thanks, Anne, for nominating me for this, for being an inspirational teacher when I was here, um, and, for, uh, and for all the kind things you had to say about me. Thanks to uh, John Kane, uh, Assistant Director of Development for the College of Arts and Sciences, who, uh, pretending to do his job, I think, has actually managed to correspond with me more about uh, books and movies than anything else. Um, thanks, John, f for keeping me apprised of what's going on at the university. Thanks to uh, friends and colleagues and family who could be here, to who could be here this evening. Uh, Brittany Lyons, uh, Mark and Laurie DeRusso, uh, my law partner, Jamie O'Neill, uh, my wife, Elisa Locke, who I met here uh, in the fall of 1990, 24 years ago, and has been my uh, partner and best friend and love almost from the very first time we set eyes on each other. Uh, Elisa is also a graduate of, um, of UDEL. She was in the uh, program of early American material culture with the Winterthur Museum, uh, one of UD's many joint programs uh, that go beyond the four squares of the campus, and one of the things I learned from Elisa very early on is that to understand something, you have to kind of take it away from the wall and look at the back. You have to get on your hands and knees and look under it to see how it's put together. You have to turn it over and look for the maker's mark to see what it's all about. If you turn over the University of Delaware, uh, in, in addition to a long and distinguished history, one of the things you see that comprises it is the Morrell Land Grant Act which was a crazy idea that Congress had long about 1862, which is that if you gave land to the states for the establishment of institutions of higher learning, you'd achieve something other than a zero-sum game. You would get more if you gave. You would educate the community. You would uh, in enhance the standing of that community. Well. When I came here in 1990, it was immediately apparent to me that this school had a lot to give. Uh, instructors gave, and, and professors like Ann gave freely of their time outside of class. Uh, staff and administrators were really interested, not just in their jobs, but in the university itself. I had the great good fortune to work for a semester with Dr. Roselle, who really turned uh, my mind away from just academia into a broader administrative view. So I saw from the very outset that the, the university gave a lot to its students. What I didn't know until I left 
was how much it gives to the whole community. It gives, uh, as, Anne, as Anne noted, with uh, wonderful public programming on WVUD. We've got a, a theater department that draws community members in to see plays. Uh, the university brings great speakers, all of which I think um, pulls together the idea that sometimes when you give, you get back more than you give. Giving can be more than a zero-sum game. And that's a, that's a truly remarkable thing. I'm here on the podium tonight with some, some very distinguished recipients of this award. I feel like I'm the least of, of the recipients having read through the program brochure uh, before the programs started and as I set up here. And it's, and it, and it's great that we're here to, to, to honor these recipients, but it seems to me we're also here to honor and thank President Harker, uh, the administrators and the staff and the professors of the University of Delaware that show that when you give freely of yourself, people want to give back. Uh, I, knew, I knew when I came to the University of Delaware that it was a place I wanted to come to. What they've enabled me to do is say it's a place I want to come back to. And I think it's terrific that on alumni, oh, we, can, we can all kind of come together and say, this is a place that we're thrilled to come back to. Thank you. Hello. Mark Strasser is frequently called Mr. Delaware. In fact, he might be the biggest fan the state has ever seen. He holds an annual birthday party for Delaware, has a Delaware flag flying high over our home, and even insisted on naming our dog, you guessed it, Della. Mark earned his bachelor degree in health and physical education from UD in 2002, and a master's in health education and promotion from Eastern Carolina University in 2012. He serves as a health and PE teacher, coach, and athletic director at the Rainbow Community School in Asheville, North Carolina. Previously, he served as a health and PE teacher for six years where he encouraged healthy lifestyles for both students and staff. He was named the 2006 North Carolina Middle School Coach of the Year. In 2007, his desire for teaching took him to Iguafo, Ghana, where he taught K through 8th English, health and physical education. He then traveled to India where he taught staff working with street children effective teaching strategies and initiatives. A proud blue hen, Mark has helped coordinate and plan several events for alumni in the Asheville area, and this summer, his ultimate Frisbee team became the world champs in Lecco, Italy. There, Mark was rated the ninth best ultimate Frisbee player in the world. Congratulations, Mark, on receiving a 2014 presidential citation for outstanding achievement. Thank you all very much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, my wife jokingly calls me, like you said, the poster child of the University of Delaware. And living in North Carolina, nothing brings me more joy than hearing, oh, I've never met anyone from Delaware before. <laughs> because then this guy gets to explain how amazing the university is. <laughs> it's, it's great. Um, and um, something I just wanted to share uh, one of the other great gifts the university has bestowed upon me was the opportunity to be myself and just to kind of go for it. Uh, figure out what I love and follow that passion. Um, and my family's been phenomenal. They've supported me through horrible 80s attire that I wore as a kid. And uh, that support, as well as the university's opportunities that they presented to me, have just completely... Um, help me grow as a personal, on a personal level, then also on a professional level. Uh, the faculty of the University of Delaware 
helped me through the changing of my major, and then having, helping me excel and flourish in my new field of health and physical education, uh, which I've been able to teach internationally and then also give speeches on a national level. Um, they knew when to push me and when to kind of let me fall and stumble. Uh, for instance, I was taking a, a dance class and I had to choreograph a, a dance move with some uh, implements and a lot of people were picking some hip current MC Hammer songs and I picked like a fish song and they just rolled their eyes and they let me go with it and hey man they let me find my own path and follow my passion and just have a good time doing it. Um, also my network at the University of Delaware was extremely integral in shaping who I become. Uh, my friends supported me in my major, in my sporting endeavors, and in my life. They helped me uh, to challenge conventional wisdom and helped me to view situations in unique perspectives. Uh, they pushed me to the best person and player I could be. And uh, I'm lucky to have some of my favorite blue hens in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, one was my roommate, teammate, coworker, and best man at my wedding, Sean Guerin, and, uh, and then Diane Strasser, my wife. And even if, I, even if I never come back here, I will have the best blue hen memorabilia with me <laughs> in Diane. Um, so I want to thank the university and helping us get together. I love you, Di. Thank you. Thanks. Good evening. I'm Dr. Kathy Shell, and I'm the director of the School of Nursing here at UD. And I'm pleased to introduce Noreen Watson. Noreen and I have known each other since the 1980s. Noreen received her bachelor's and master's degrees in nursing from the university in 1993 and 1997, respectively. She began her practice in the 1980s as a staff nurse and preceptor on medical and cardiac units in New Jersey and then at Christiana Hospital here in Delaware. Her clinical expertise and ability to connect with and teach her colleagues new nurses and students were soon recognized as she became a nurse educator at Christiana Care for a period of 10 years. This is when we worked pretty closely together and always respected each other's opinions and learned a lot from each other. Between 1997 and 2005, she assumed positions as clinical data analyst, corporate manager of service excellence, and magnet designation coordinator in which she became involved in data analysis, performance improvement, and service excellence at Christiana Care. This knowledge and experience transferred easily as she became the Director of Nursing Excellence at Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children in 2005. In this role, she is responsible for department budget development, continuing education planning and implementation, and coordination of clinical experiences for affiliated schools of nursing. Here too, we often have conversations about student issues, trends in nursing, where our graduate students can find positions, and other things. So it's been very helpful to have a, an alum there. She oversees nurse clinicians, clinical nurse specialists, and educators, healing touch practitioners, and you should ask her about what those people do, healing touch is very important, and lactation consultants. She led the efforts that resulted in the Nemours AI DuPont Hospital being designated as a magnet hospital in November 2012. Magnet is the highest and most prestigious international distinction a healthcare organization or hospital can receive for nursing excellence and outstanding patient care. So if you ever want to go to the hospital of your choice, make sure it's a magnet hospital. Um, I wanted to say that Ma that's a very short couple sentences, but magnet designation takes years of work and it involves every healthcare provider in that that hospital or that agency, a lot of teamwork, um, research, the highly educated staff, and just a lot of teamwork and, and consultation to get that, that award. So it was really an amazing thing. She's also the coordinator of something called the National Database of Nursing Quality Indicators. This NDNQI is very important. Uh, we, it's a repository for nursing sensitive quality information that is used by healthcare centers to make informed staffing decisions and improve patient outcomes. Noreen has always been a mentor to her colleagues. She's very kind, patient, and always thinks about the student. Uh, she's um, always inspiring them to write, to uh, present at national conferences, and she's just really been a passionate nurse 
and a role model for the profession. Noreen, your presidential citation for outstanding achievement is well deserved. Hi, good evening. Um, James, I know it wasn't easy going first, but being 10th allows, allows you to sit and listen to the outstanding accomplishments of your other awardees, and I found it makes your palms sweat a little bit. <laughs> yes. Um, I join many of the other awardees in feeling very undeserving of this honor, and yet very, very honored by it. Thank you, President Harker. Um, when I got Lauren's email, I couldn't even respond to it for a few days. It was, caused me some stress. Um, but I am very, very grateful for the opportunity to express my gratitude to the University of Delaware. This university and the School of Nursing opened a career up for me that allowed me to provide direct patient care as a registered nurse, but it also allowed me to grow into a mentor, a teacher, and a nurse leader. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. At UD, I had the good fortune to have ha faculty that helped me become a nurse, and then they stay with you throughout your career. I loved Kathy's remarks because it's true. The UD faculty have been with me everywhere in the state of Delaware I've practiced. I have to mention my master's advisor, Dr. Lucille Pulliam. She had the amazing ability to get right where I was as a student, see some nugget of potential in me, and then help me get to a new level of understanding. I didn't know it when Lucille was pushing me, but I know it now. I would have never accomplished anything in my career if it wasn't for her and her nudging me. I've got to say thank you to the awesome Kathy Shell. I thank you for initiating this nomination. I'm just so honored that you did that. But more importantly, you have been such a solid colleague and friend to me throughout my career, so I thank you for that. It's fun to be at this podium and be able to do that. Um, just last week, Kathy sitting in her office at UD, me sitting in my office at Nemours, we discussed the future of the pediatric clinical nurse specialist role, the two of us. We're managing that. <laughs> Um, UD faculty are not only outstanding in their academic roles, they're also practicing clinicians. So once you graduate, you go out into the workforce, they are right there with you. I can't say that enough. I have to thank, I have some great mentors in this room, and I'm going to take a minute and thank them too. Joan Thomas, the nurse leader that we all strive to be. Joan has had a career full of accomplishments in a variety of practice settings. But Joan, I think when I was thinking about you this afternoon, I think the thing that you did for me was you opened lifelong learning up to me because you were always pursuing another degree, going back to school. And I remember that from you. And you encouraged me to go back to school. So thank you for that. Um, and then I have Luann Stratton. Luann Stratton made the trip down from Philadelphia to be here tonight. So thank you, Luann, for that. There is no one else in the world like Luann Stratton. We had the privilege of working closely together for five years to, to get to magnet designation. And to this day and every day, I find myself drawing on the things that Luann taught me. And I bring them to the, my own leadership practice. I find Luann's words coming out of my mouth all the time. <laughs> so thank you for that. I can't leave this podium without mentioning the power of having love and support in your life. I need to mention my husband, George Watson, and my wonderful, loving family. Years ago, when I, I came to university after I'd already become a nurse, I, I had an associate degree, but I knew I wanted to do more and go further. And when I said to George, I think I want to go to University of Delaware and get my BSN. And he said to me, OK, you can do that, but please don't do anything to embarrass. <laughs> 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 me or our family by not being a serious student. <laughs> so, George, <laughs> he did say that very thing, Luann. I know he's denying it, he said it. I, um, 
So George, I wanted to ask you from this podium here tonight, am I doing okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Noreen. And thank you to our presenters and congratulations to our 2014 honorees. And we're really delighted this evening that there are several, several members of our past recipients for the citation. And so I would like to ask the members who are here this evening, Faye Corman, Andrew Hill, Taisha Map Rivera, Joan Thomas, and Ping Zhu to please stand and be recognized. Thank you so much for joining us. And please, another round of applause for all of our recipients for the 2014 Presidential Citation for Outstanding Achievement.